In this video, what I'm going to do is explain um, how we shoot um, images with gold in them, uh, particularly oil paintings and acrylic paintings with gold in them, uh, but really anything with gold, silver, metallics, and iridescence um, all follow the same procedure. First, I'll explain the problem, and that is um, in order to eliminate the shininess and the glare that you see here on the left, uh, so this image was shot without polar. Um, in order to eliminate all of the glare that you see here, we uh, photograph or scan our um, images with a polarized filter, actually cross polarization. So we've got polarizing filters on the lights, each facing the uh, painting at a 45 degree angle. Um, and we've got a polarizing filter on the camera itself. What this does, however, though, is it eliminates all the glare that lets you recognize gold and silver and iridescent, so it flattens them out, and you can see what you've got here is just sort of a brown and dingy color. <clears throat> the problem is you can have one or the other. You can't have both. So when you're photographing an image like this, uh, you need to decide whether you want the glare to show the gold or whether you don't want it so that you can show the colors. And you can clearly um, see the image on the right has much brighter pinks, uh, much more defined greens. Um, the whole painting overall is richer and you can see the detail. None of, it's, uh, none of the details lost inside the glare that you see here. Um, and barring the gold, um, it will reproduce quite well. The image on the left has very beautiful gold, um, but the detail, uh, some of the details and a lot of the color has been lost in the glare. Um, and that doesn't make for reproducing a painting very well. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the best of both worlds. And the way that we do that is we set the camera up and we set the image up um, and we focus on it make sure it's where we want it and the first thing we do is we shoot it polarized like you see on the right make sure we have a good image now we don't touch the camera at all everything has to be pixel for pixel the same in both images so what we do is we set up our camera to uh, shoot polar like this we take the shot and then we remove the polarizing filter and we shoot the same painting again but exactly like I said pixel for pixel so that it's the same the camera hasn't moved the image hasn't moved and that way we'll be able to stack them once we're done so we bring the images into Photoshop like this they are exactly the same and we have the non-polarized image on the right and we have the I'm sorry we have non polarized image on the left and the polarized image on the right now I'm going to take this image on the left that is non polarized and doesn't look very good I'm going to hold down the shift key in Photoshop while I drag this on top of the other image in Photoshop when you hold down the shift key and drag a layer from one file to another as long as they are the same size Photoshop will place them exactly on top of each other so now we have a stacked image except I want the non-polarized image on the bottom and the polarized on the top just to make it a little bit easier to work with this I'm gonna go ahead and crop now there is our image that's what we're going to be working on so what we do now and it is a painstaking process uh, but what we do now is you go through the image and wherever there's gold oops, be on the upper image wherever there's gold you simply erase so I'm using the eraser tool right now in Photoshop and going around and erasing all this now since the image is the same underneath and on top um, you really don't need to be exact exact in what you erase away because um, it's going to be the same underneath but by doing this in selective areas now wherever we've got glare in the painting the polarization on the upper image um, is mitigating that glare we have to go around and really 
erase all the gold, but you can see the result is beautiful. Um, you get a very nice result. It's a little bit painstaking. It can take some time um, to do this, but really I haven't found a better way. Um, you're either, like I said, you're either going to get glare or you're going to get a really nice gold. Now again, the, the process will be exactly the same uh, for iridescence and silvers, bronzes, any, any other metallics. A couple things to note, when you're working in areas like this where there's not a lot of glare, um, it's pretty easy to be sloppy. Here, let's zoom in here. Uh, when you're working around areas, in the dark areas in particular, where where there is a lot of glare, see if I erase that, you can see it gets a little bit foggy and ugly. So we do kind of want to zoom in there and only erase away kind of as much as we really need. But you can see as you do that, the gold just it just comes to life as you're doing it. Um, and I think this really helps make the difference between a, a nice professionally shot image and one that you've done at home. Just can't figure out the gold. There we go. Look at that. It just pops. Now, when, like again, when I'm in these dark areas like this, um, I want to do my best so you can to, to not get into that blue. So I'm letting that brush right on the, the inside of the gold rather than to the outside of it. Here, I'll show you here in a second. So let's say I let my brush drift to the outside into that blue, just swash like that, and you can just see it's a little bit foggy there. Don't like it. I'm going to go back and get rid of that. Um, and you do have to pay attention to the glare around the area that you're erasing as you do it. Da, da. It just, just absolutely comes to life when you do that. So depending on how much gold is in the piece, um, I, I mean it can take anywhere from minutes to you know, hours to restore the gold in a piece like this and keep the glare off of the paint, the oil paint or the acrylic paint. Um, watercolors with gold are a little bit easier because you've really not got much glare um, in the watercolor itself and sometimes you can actually just get away with a half polarized or unpolarized shot with a gold when the paint itself um, isn't shiny like gouache and watercolor. Oil and acrylics, however, they like to be shiny, uh, particularly with varnish, and um, it's just something you have to decide if you want one or the other. Now, when you've got a ton of gold that's really splattered throughout a piece, and I mean splattered like this right here, you've got little tiny bits of it everywhere, um, it it can be very difficult and in fact sometimes impossible to get all of it um, in that case I'm not sure what to say um, that's why people buy originals instead of uh, prints sometimes there really isn't a great facsimile of it and this is one of those examples where the original is always gonna always gonna be something special um, unless the artist goes in and really embellishes the prints with gold but even then you're gonna miss some of the texture and uh, personality that comes through on an original piece and that's kind of uh, what you do and um, just do a little bit of time and go across the entire piece and do this now for the dem purposes of this demonstration uh, I have made a second copy of this and here I'm going to show you the completed version of it and there it is you can see all the gold is showing all over the place um, you zoom in you have gold everywhere it looks really nice you don't have any glare on the painting um, but you do still have um, textures where you want to see texture down in here you're getting some of the texture and the strokes conclusion that is how you um, edit both uh, photograph and um, edit golds, metallics, iridescence, for example, um, and shiny artwork. Really haven't better, found a better method other than to shoot it twice, once polar, once non-polar, and then stack those images and clean them up. 
Hope this video has been helpful and happy painting.